Episode 251, A Phantom in the Night. Cedric wasn't sure how to reply to that, but Vincent's face fell and he gave Pearl a swift kick under the table. Pearl looked at Cedric and suddenly smiled. Cedric, I was just joking with you. Did you actually believe me? <laughs> I'm pretty funny, right? <laughs> Vincent clenched his jaw. Cedric stirred the coffee placed in front of him with a small spoon before raising his brow. I can't seem to catch Miss Brown's humor. I'm afraid I must have misunderstood. Misunderstood? The corner of Pearl's lips twitched. Vincent winced. If this continued any further, Pearl would ruin the date before it had even really begun. He laughed loudly and swiftly changed the topic, drawing Cedric into a discussion about politics. Pearl stifled a yawn, wishing she could leave. She turned to look out a large window, and two bright rays of light beamed in through the glass. A Rolls-Royce Phantom came into her line of sight. The car door opened and Danny got out. Instantly, Pearl found it hard to breathe. Why was he here? Had he been discharged from the hospital already? Sporting a green V-neck sweater paired with tailored black pants and a black coat, Danny was as handsome as ever. He didn't enter the hotel, but continued to lean casually against the car as he took his phone from his pocket. He had just been discharged from the hospital and his fringe fell over his deep, enchanting eyes as he lowered his head. The night breeze complimented his languid pose, and he seemed rather cold in the dark mist. Although he stood facing in her direction, Pearl couldn't make out if he was looking at her or not, but she swore she could feel his deep eyes boring into her through the frosty air. Ding! Pearl's phone chimed, and her heart skipped a beat. Tapping the message open, she saw Danny's name, followed by just two words. Come out. Come out. He wanted her to come outside. Pearl? Pearl, what's the matter? Why are you in a daze? Vincent asked. Pearl hastily pulled herself together and chanced to look at Cedric. Cedric was taking a sip of coffee and his eyes flicked over to her. His gaze felt gentle and harmless. Oh, I'm fine, Pearl replied inattentively. Vincent questioned her, seemingly concerned. Pearl, are you feeling unwell? Cedric observed Pearl without making a sound. As a seasoned member of the political elite, he was incredibly observant, and his gentle eyes were tempered by a keen astuteness. This woman gave off a quirky, interesting vibe, but she didn't seem to be engaged in their date at all. It was clear she wasn't really interested in him, but in a matter of seconds, she transformed into another person, instantly quietening down and blinking her long lashes. In that split second, her eyes filled with emotion, and Cedric saw a series of complicated feelings flash across her face. Who had caused her to become so impassioned and then so distracted? Cedric looked through the glistening French window and saw the man standing outside. He was too striking not to be noticed, not to mention he owned a prestigious limited edition car. A cold aura of power radiated from him, and even Cedric found it hard to tear his gaze away. Ah. Cedric lightly raised the corner of his lips. So it was one of the country's most successful businessmen, Danny, heir of the Simon family. A few decades ago, the Leightons and the Simons were on par, holding the positions of the wealthiest and most influential families. But Jordan was an innate genius, especially when compared to the distinctly average Oliver. As time passed, the disparity between the two families only continued to grow, and the Simon family was fully dependent on the elder Mr. Simon to maintain its eminence. But the best laid plans of men often go awry. Out of the blue, Jordan suddenly vanished, and Danny appeared from nowhere, glimmering like a polished pearl. In less than a decade since, this man had restored the Simon family back to its former glory. He was a force to be reckoned with. Episode 252, Marking His Territory To say Danny Simon was influential would be an understatement. The Richardson family had been away for a long time, but they were familiar with Danny's reputation. 
Ding! Pearl received another message. I've just been discharged from the hospital. I'm starving. Come and have dinner with me. Pearl clutched her cell phone with a vice-like grip. After everything had happened, all he had to say was that he was hungry. He had been unconscious in a hospital for 24 hours with only an IV drip for sustenance. Even if he'd had a body of steel, he wouldn't be able to hold up in this state. What was he thinking? Without warning, Pearl's eyes welled up, and she furiously blinked back the traitorous tears. He was doing this on purpose, coming all the way out here when he had barely recovered. Was he determined to ruin his body? He wanted her to be heartbroken. Pearl switched off her cell phone and threw it into her purse. Danny stood outside, watching intently as Pearl switched off her phone and ignored him. He frowned and took a deep breath to calm himself, but the cold air caught in his throat and he choked out a cough. His muscular chest jolted as his lungs were seized with a burning pain. He doubled over in agony and felt something catch in his throat. He blinked rapidly and cleared his throat, forcing the strange substance back down. When he stood upright, his eyes were bloodshot and he took several slow, cautious breaths. His hand ran through his hair and he pushed himself off the side of the car, heading for the hotel entrance. By now, Vincent had made an excuse to leave so that the two youngsters would have the chance to get to know each other alone. The hotel doors burst open and a gust of cold wind swept through the private room. A man's glistening leather shoes thudded on the waxed marble floors. Every step he took exuding charisma and power. A deep magnetic voice resounded through the room. Pearl, why didn't you tell me earlier that you were going to visit my hotel? Cedric lifted his head and saw Danny walking toward him. Danny didn't break his stride as an attendant took care of his coat and he gave a spurious smile before turning his gaze on Pearl. Pearl eyed Danny in disbelief. The Plaza Hotel belonged to him? She hadn't known that. She certainly hadn't expected him to storm into a private room, but since he owned the place... Pearl felt the familiar masculinity getting closer. Danny's manly, reassuring smell was mingled with some kind of disinfectant, she guessed from the hospital. He bent down as he reached her, kissing her lightly on the forehead. Pearl's heart skipped a beat. The kiss was gentle, but filled with possessiveness. It was overbearing, yet comforting at the same time. It was as though he was marking his territory, telling the world that she belonged to him. Cedric looked at Danny as he kissed Pearl's brow. The young Richardson's face didn't give away much. He kept the same mild expression, with only the slightest narrowing of his eyes. Danny crossed between them and sat beside Pearl as naturally as if he'd been invited. His arrival had put attention into the air of the private room. The hotel's manager rushed over. Mr. President, what can I get for you? Danny waved his hand dismissively, signaling for the manager to take his leave and gave Cedric a mocking smile. Cedric, I didn't anticipate your arrival in New York. What are you doing now? Setting up a date with Pearl? Aren't you afraid I'll be consumed by jealousy? Jealousy? Cedric raised an eyebrow. Mr. Simon, what exactly is your relationship with Miss Brown? She's mine. The two words were all he said, short and succinct. Oh, <laughs> I heard you just got engaged to the beloved daughter of the Layton family, Clarice. Now you're here claiming that Miss Brown is yours. I'm afraid I just don't understand. Are you saying she's your mistress? Episode 253, The Choice is Yours. Cedric's words were provocative, and the look that passed between him and Danny was equally fierce and loaded. Pearl's face paled as she looked between the two men, and she hurriedly stood up. You two can have a good catch-up. I have to use the washroom. Danny's eyes followed her until she disappeared from his view. He took a cigar from his jacket pocket and held it out. Cedric, can I tempt you? Cedric smiled. Thanks for the offer, Mr. Simon, but I don't smoke. Danny put the cigar in his mouth and lit it, placing one arm on the table and taking a long puff. I've had a craving recently. I hope you don't mind. Cedric only shrugged in response. 
Danny blew out a plume of smoke and said in a cold voice, Tell me, Cedric, what brings you back to New York? Back when Lady Beatrice caused all that chaos between the Leightons and the Simons, not many people realized that my father played only an insignificant part in it. The war about Lady Beatrice was actually a fight between Jordan Layton and your own father, the commander. Those two were the real competitors in question. As Cedric remained silent, Danny went on. But it's such a waste. Jordan was a genius who was so unpredictable. Back then, he used his influence to uproot the Richardson family from New York. So how is it that you've dared to come back now and that you've chosen to go after an interest of mine? Aren't you afraid of being chased out again? The war back then had indeed led the Richardson family to lose much of their influence, but they had been willing to compromise and didn't regret their actions in the slightest. The Richardsons could never be compared to Jordan Layton. That demon was one of a kind. Cedric held up the coffee in his elegant hands and took a sip. The coffee had gone slightly cold, but the flavor had intensified. Mr. Simon, since you're not afraid, why should I be? All those years ago, the Simon family didn't even qualify to enter the race. You've spent the past couple of decades working your way up, and you should really cherish everything you have now. Why destroy your hard work so easily? Ha! Danny barked out a foreboding chuckle. Cedric carried on. Whether it's the Leighton family or my own, we have extremely strong foundations. To be frank, if I were you, I'd be more concerned about the Simon family. You haven't stood long enough among the ranks of the elite. The most powerful families are negotiating mutually advantageous marriages between their children. And if I were in your shoes, I'd be making moves with the Leighton family. Clarice would make a most beneficial match. Cedric took another sip of his coffee. But I've heard rumors that your father has his eye on my sister. As you know, I have three sisters, and all of them are intelligent. My second sister will be marrying Mark Young. You should know my first sister. Well, there are countless men chasing after her, but she only has eyes for you. As long as you're willing, a union between the Simons and the Richardsons can be arranged. Why waste any more time? Danny continued to smoke his cigar, the haze surrounding him almost entirely. I know you haven't had it easy in the last few years. A large-scale group under your leadership and your mother and sister under your care. If I may speak openly, Mr. Simon, you should consider either Clarice Layton or my sister. Pearl has no background or status. She's just not a good match for you. Danny's face was unreadable beneath the cloud of cigar smoke. Suddenly, he laughed. <laughs> You've gone to all this trouble just to get me to give up on Pearl? Is that so you can have a chance yourself? Cedric smiled charismatically. Hmm, Miss Brown is indeed intriguing. The humor vanished from Danny's face as his expression turned to ice. Stop wasting your thoughts on someone beyond your reach. Get Pearl out of your head. In the ladies' bathroom, Pearl splashed water over her face before heading out. As she walked along the corridor, a dark silhouette crossed her line of sight, and she looked up to see a familiar figure. Episode 254, Truly Ruthless. Danny stood down the corridor, one hand in his trouser pocket and the other holding his cigar. A frown creased his brow as he took a puff. Pearl could vaguely make out the strong lines of his face through the smoky haze. She pulled her shoulders back and strode down the corridor toward him. He had blocked her way out on purpose, making sure she couldn't leave without facing him first. Pearl was resolute as she walked directly past Danny. She refused to look up at him. But her wrist was grabbed by a strong hand and she heard his deep laughter ring in her ears. <laughs> Pearl, you're pretending to be a stranger now, huh? Let go of me, Danny, Pearl sneered. Danny cupped her chin with the hand that was holding a cigar. He scanned her face before smirking. I was lying unconscious in a hospital and you're out on a blind date. Now you've been caught red-handed and you even have the nerve to try and ignore me? Pearl, you truly are getting more daring. Danny's cigar hovered by Pearl's face and she frowned at him and snapped, 
Get away from me, you reek of cigar. Is the smoke stifling? Danny asked. He dropped his arm before stubbing the cigar out and tossing it into the trash. He took Pearl in his arms and pressed her against the wall, surrounding her with his strong chest as he leaned in close. His fingers returned to her jaw and he brushed his rough fingertips over her smooth skin. You can explain yourself properly now. Why did you meet up with Cedric? Pearl lifted her head and looked directly into his handsome face. Danny, we've broken up. You're Clarissa's fiance now and I'm free to do whatever I want. Why should I have to explain myself to you? The people I meet, even who I date, is none of your business anymore. Date? Danny repeated the word through gritted teeth, hissing it out like it was a curse. His tongue flicked out to lick his dry lips. Since being discharged from the hospital, he hadn't had a single drop of water, and though he was smiling, the look in his eyes was bone-chilling. So you're planning to date Cedric. When did you become delusional enough to think you could dump me? Pearl hadn't meant to end up on a date with Cedric, but in the mood Danny was in, she knew there was no point explaining. What do you want, Danny? You're the delusional one if you think I'll still follow you around and be your mist enough with the bullshit. Danny pinned her against the wall, his eyes filled with darkness as he poked the area over her heart. You know the reason behind my engagement with Clarice. It wasn't an ideal solution, but I was left with no choice. My love for you has never changed. Yet you, you want to kick me to the gutter after all we've been through. I've been out cold in a hospital for the last 24 hours, and even now, I can't stop worrying about you, waiting for you to call me when the poison acts up. And now I've woken up and come to find you. This is what you're giving me? I never knew you could be so ruthless. He jabbed his finger hard into her chest, and Pearl thought the pain might consume her. Tears welled up in her eyes, threatening to spill over, and she forced them back. You still have no idea what I really want. I don't need your salvation, Danny. She shoved him back with every ounce of her strength. Danny felt a fire rage inside him as he took in Pearl's dismissal. From the corner of his eye, he saw a figure walking towards them. It was Cedric. Danny didn't blink. He lowered his head and captured Pearl's supple red lips with his own. He hated the feeling of having a fever. He hated the helplessness that consumed him. He hated being so weak. He last had had a fever when he was a boy, and although this time round his fever was subsiding, the awful helplessness was back again to haunt him. Pearl's lips were soft and moist. Once Danny started kissing her, he didn't want to let them go. It was as if he had found an oasis in the middle of the desert. Her sweetness had him addicted, trapped in those cherry red lips. Episode 255. This chip won't be gambled. Pearl's eyes flew open in shock. All she could see was Danny's handsome face, and even this close, he still looked dashing and perfect. Danny was lost in his passion, exploring her luscious mouth as if he couldn't get enough of her. Pearl took a deep breath, instantly consumed by the faint scent of tobacco that mingled with Danny's clean, masculine aroma. She grasped his sweater tightly in her fists and pushed him away forcefully. Danny, let go of me! Danny took a step back, glaring at her furiously, like a wolf that might swallow her whole. It had been too long since their last contact, and the heat of her body against his, the sweet smell of her, and the feeling of her lips was making him infatuated all over again. Mr. Simon, Cedric walked over. Miss Brown has expressed her unwillingness. Is it fair for a gentleman like you to force a woman to do something against her will? Cedric moved in front of Pearl and raised his arm, putting up a protective front. Danny's cold eyes were tinged with a hint of blood, and he raised a corner of his lips sarcastically. Cedric, you have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know our history, and you're in no position to meddle in my affairs. Now get lost. You're blocking me from something that's mine. The man was truly arrogant. <laughs> Cedric laughed smoothly. And say I insist on protecting her. What are you going to do then? 
Danny clenched his fist by his side, his aura dark and oppressive. Cedric drew his other hand from his trouser pocket and began to unbutton his knit sweater. I've heard, Mr. Simon, that you've spent some training in the martial arts. What a coincidence. I also learned martial arts back in my military days. How about we put our skills to the test? Cedric turned to glance at Pearl. The winner earns the right to leave with Miss Brown. Ha! Danny forced a spurious laugh from his throat and calmly rolled up his sleeves. Pearl's mine, Cedric. If you're trying to use her as a gambling chip, you're doing a decent job of defrauding me. But you know what? I'll give you the opportunity to take me on. Hell, I'll even allow you to concede defeat. Cedric merely raised an eyebrow. Pearl chose the moment to speak up. Are the two of you done? Did either of you stop to think that the gambling chip might have a say in all this? Don't worry, Miss Brown. I'll get this over with, and then we can leave. Cedric smiled. Pearl, Danny growled, be a good girl and step aside. This is between men. Pearl flinched in anger and opened her mouth to retort, but Danny had already thrown the first punch, hurling his strong fist at Cedric's jaw. Cedric skillfully dodged to the side, avoiding the blow. The atmosphere in the corridor crackled with tension. The two men circled each other warily, sizing the other up. Danny made use of his quick reflexes, and his attack was precise. But Cedric was the son of a high-ranking military commander, and had spent part of his own career in the armed forces. He was no less skilled than Danny. After trading blows back and forth, it was clear that a winner wasn't going to emerge any time soon. Cedric's gaze dropped to Danny's chest. Are you injured, Mr. Simon? The two men were equally matched in strength and ability, and both were trained to spot an opponent's weakness. Danny had already exposed his own shortcomings, but Danny only smirked, a sharp and devious glint lighting his narrowed eyes. Apologies in advance, Mr. Simon. Do excuse me for this. Cedric lunged forward and struck Danny hard in the chest. Episode 256. Maybe you'll be happy once I'm dead. Bam! The punch thumped into Danny's torso, and he reeled back from the force. Cedric hadn't held anything back. Pearl's stomach lurched and her heart wrenched in pain, as though she had taken the blow herself. The impact went straight to Danny's heart, and it seared in pain as though it was on fire. He had discharged himself from a 24-hour stint in the hospital so that he could find Pearl. And now he had suffered a forceful punch to the same injury that had put him in the hospital in the first place. Pearl could see his profile. His handsome face was taut, and he was clearly in a lot of pain. The punch had been perfect, but as soon as it had landed, Cedric's eyes turned incisive and guarded. Danny hadn't avoided his punch. Why didn't he avoid the punch? He was certainly a good enough fighter, and Cedric had even warned him first. There was only one possible reason. Danny had taken the hit on purpose. Cedric realized he had fallen into Danny's trap. He hurriedly retracted his arm, but it was too late. A heavy fist swung directly into his abdomen. Cedric stumbled back and crashed into the wall. He doubled over in pain, sweat breaking out across his brow. Danny was more callous and cunning than he'd imagined. He'd purposely revealed the injury on his chest, inviting an attack so that Cedric would drop his guard. Danny swayed back a few steps too, but it wasn't long before he had control of his body again. With his gaze locked on Cedric, he raised a corner of his thin lips. You've lost, Cedric. The two men were both injured, but Cedric seemed the worse off. He could barely stand up straight. Ha! Cedric clutched his abdomen with one hand. You win this round, Mr. Simon. I'll concede defeat. Cedric knew when he was outmatched. It took a lot of balls for someone to use their own injury as bait. The business kingpin was as ruthless as his reputation made out, even to himself. Danny didn't bother to reply to Cedric. He strode over to Pearl and wrapped a strong arm around her waist, pulling her out of the building. Danny steered Pearl to his Rolls Royce and opened the passenger side. Get in. 
Pearl twisted out of his grasp. I'll head home by myself, thanks. I don't need you to give me a lift. Turning on her heel, she walked away. She hadn't made it far when she heard a muffled groan from behind her. Pearl stopped and turned to look back. Danny's head was bowed and his hands pressed against the injury on his chest. His injuries were hidden under his clothes, but it wasn't hard to imagine that the force of Cedric's blow had ripped the wound open again. Danny, she jogged back to him. Are you okay? You need to get back to the hospital so they can look at the wound. Still concerned about me. Danny let his hands drop and looked up with a satisfied smile. It was then Pearl realized that just like Cedric, she had fallen for his act. She stiffened and threw an ice-cold expression his way. Danny, don't you realize how childish you're being? Danny didn't take his eyes off her as the corner of his mouth quirked up. His voice dripped sarcasm as he quipped, Ouch, Pearl. Are you only going to be happy once I'm dead? Dead? He threw the word out so flippantly, but Pearl felt as though her heart was being twisted in someone's fist. The pain was so intense that she couldn't breathe properly. She knew, deep in her heart, that she still loved Danny. But could she ever have a happy ending with him? The love pee potion could start acting up at any moment, and he wouldn't hesitate to marry Claire if it meant getting the other half of the antidote to save Pearl's life. She'd rather die than have to watch him do something like that. If she were to live, then Danny would have to marry Clarice. If she chose to die instead, how could she let him suffer so much? Episode 257 He's really gone this time. Pearl felt an uncontrollable sadness arising from deep in her heart. She would rather end things quickly and let Danny go. She knew he could have a future without her. Pearl took a deep breath and looked him in the eye. Danny, would you please stop pestering me? I'll admit I was fond of you at the start of our relationship, but I was dazzled by your wealth and influence, and you seemed so handsome and charming. I enjoyed the feeling of being protected and wooed by you. You know as well as I do, no woman on earth would reject the chance to become Mrs. Daniel Simon. But you're engaged to Clarice. What on earth makes you think I'd settle for being your dirty little secret? Danny's face darkened and his thin lips pursed. The air around him seemed to drop a few degrees in temperature. But Pearl was relentless. You've seen Cedric. He's no less of a catch than you. Why would I remain your bit on the side when I could choose to be the first lady of the political elite? Danny stared at her. After a few moments, he moved his lips. So you're telling me now that you didn't fall in love with me, just my money and power? And now that you found someone better, you're going to cast me aside? Pearl's jaw tightened as she willed her tears not to fall. She knew that once she nodded, she would never have a chance to be with Danny again. She forced herself to look him in the eye. Yes. The night breeze whipped Danny's coat behind him, and his tall figure was cast into sharp relief by the neon lights of the city. A dark shadow fell over his eyes, and Pearl couldn't make out his expression. Finally, he raised the corner of his chapped lips. Ha. Huh. His laugh sounded hollow and dry. All right, Pearl. If I ever come back to you, I'll be a cheap man. Danny turned back to his car, yanking the door open and dropping into the driver's seat. He hit the gas and the Rolls Royce vanished before Pearl could even think to reply. He had left... This time, he had really left. They were over. Pearl watched a cloud of dust settling before her. Finally, she allowed herself to smile. A lifeless, gentle smile. Don't concern yourself with me, Danny. Go and live a wonderful life without me. There are so many eligible women out there. You'll meet someone better than me. I know you will. Someone better for you. She knew she would eventually be forgotten. Pearl trailed the dark streets, miserable and dejected. Where could she go? Danny had left, emptying her entire heart as though he had taken it with him. 
Her ankle gave way and she fell to the ground in a pathetic heap. Her stiletto had got stuck in a manhole cover, and try as she might, she couldn't pull it free. The cold night breeze was like a knife slicing at Pearl's body. Her hands were red, raw from scraping along the rough ground when she broke her fall. It hurt. Everyone was bullying her, including the pair of heels she wore. An overwhelming wave of sadness crashed over Pearl, and her eyes welled up as the grievances in her heart overflowed. She could hold back no longer, and hot tears fell to the ground as her body was racked with sobs. The pain she had bottled up for so long finally spilled out, drop after drop, until she was left empty and broken, alone on the cold sidewalk. She had never been as sober than she was at that moment. She had never really broken up with Danny. In all her life, she knew she would never again be so lucky as to meet another man like Danny. Letting him go was like wrenching her own heart out. The pain seemed unbearable. She wrapped her arms around her shivering legs and lowered her head, letting herself sob helplessly. Passersby stared in curiosity, trying to figure out why a beautiful woman like her would be crying in devastation on the floor. Pearl had no idea how much time had passed, just that she was freezing cold and unable to move. A deep magnetic voice rang in her ears. You finally abandoned me. Shouldn't you be happy? Why are you crying so miserably? Pearl froze. That voice. Her head snapped up, and through her sea of tears, she locked eyes with a deep, penetrating gaze. Danny towered over her, looking down at her from above. Episode 258, Never Let Me Go. He didn't actually leave. He came back. Pearl lifted her hands to wipe the tears from her face, but instead, more tears tumbled from her eyes. She knew she must look pathetic, and she gave up struggling. She lowered her head and sobbed. Why did you come back? Didn't you just say you'd be a cheap man if you ever came back to me? Danny looked down, watching the tears stream down Pearl's cheeks. He had an image of raindrops falling on rose petals. He cleared his dry throat and said hoarsely, I just wanted to witness it for myself. Whether a self-proclaimed superficial gold digger like you would shed even a single tear. If you did, I wouldn't mind being a cheap man for once. When a man was fighting with a woman, he could put down his pride and lower his head to apologize. Three years ago when this woman collided with him, throwing his world into disarray, she had entered his heart unknowingly. He found that he didn't want to give her up that easily. He wanted to give himself another chance. Pearl's shoulders began to tremble even more. Danny couldn't bear to see her in such a state. This is for you. Pearl lifted her eyes and saw a beautiful rose before her. I saw someone selling them on the street while I was driving, so I bought one. I remembered your reaction the last time I gave you a rose. Pearl slowly stretched out her hand, accepting the gift. The rose gave off a faint fragrance, and the scent drifted into her nose. As she blinked, the tears on her eyelashes fell onto the petals. Pearl couldn't deny the fluttering in her heart. Danny knelt down and took her ankle in his strong hands, dislodging her heel from the manhole cover with ease. He unwound the crystal chain wrapped around her ankle and gently massaged the area. Does it still hurt? He asked in a low voice. Pearl looked at him, her eyes still watery. His rough fingertips massaging her ankle made her feel safe and cared for, causing her toes to curl up and a warmth to burrow through her body. Danny's lowered face was shadowed by his fringe, and Pearl bent her neck to see his expression. It was as gentle as ever. Not anymore, she replied softly. Danny stood holding Pearl in his muscular arms as he helped her to her feet. Come on, I'll give you a piggyback. Pearl considered the broad shoulders and defined muscles of Danny's back. It was simply irresistible. 
and combined with the sweet, intimate gesture of a piggyback, it was enough to make Pearl melt. No need, she said breathlessly. I can walk by myself. Oh! Her ankle buckled as she tried to support her own weight. In a flash, Danny had scooped her up and hoisted her onto his back. Her legs rested around his waist, and she felt caged and secure with his muscled arms wrapped around them. She shifted her hips and looped her arms around his shoulders, getting comfortable. Her crystal heels were still in Danny's hands. I'd carry you anywhere, Pearl. Will you forgive me? Pearl's tears started to fall uncontrollably again, and she buried her face in the side of Danny's neck. Baby, let's stop wasting time and just make up, okay? I feel like I'm going crazy. I don't ever want to let you go. Danny! Pearl burst into fresh sobs. I don't want to die, but I can't bear to watch you marry Clarice. What should I do? My heart hurts. It hurts so much that I think it might give out. What can I do? Episode 259. It's all my fault. Danny carried Pearl with steady footsteps, listening to her helpless sobbing. Softly, he placated her. I won't marry Clarice. I'll get the antidote from her. I promise you, Pearl. Did he have a plan? Pearl knew that if she made the choice to stay with him, it would place all stress and burden on him. To be together was to face an uphill battle. But she didn't want to let go of him again. Pearl, I'll be honest with you. When I got engaged to Clarice, it's true, I wanted to keep it from you. It's how I learned to deal with things like this when I was growing up. My father wasn't home most of the time. My mother is a discontented woman. My grandfather only doted on me if I met his expectations. After all that, I became accustomed to being alone. It's just how it always was. There was never anyone around to talk to never anyone to lean on. But now I've got you, and I want to protect you whatever it takes. That's why I hid the engagement from you. I didn't want to worry you. But I promise, Pearl, I'll never lie to you again. You deserve more than that. It's all my fault. I'm so sorry, baby. It was the first time Pearl had heard Danny mention his family situation. The pain in his voice as he apologized made her tear up all over again. She recalled Alana's slap. His mother hated her deep inside, and his father was trying to make her his mistress. That moment, she didn't feel bad for herself. She felt bad for Danny. How would he react once he found out? He was a human, flesh and blood, and his heart felt pain just like anyone else's. How come other relationships were so smooth sailing while theirs was so turbulent? All they wanted was to be together. Pearl leaned over Danny's bronze shoulder to kiss his cheek. I accept your apology, Danny. I forgive you. Danny slowly raised his lips to reveal a genuine smile, his deep eyes creasing with warmth and joy. Pearl, thank you. You're welcome. Pearl sniffed and wiped the tears from her face. She had decided to stay with him. No matter how hard times would be in the future, she would hold on tight and never let go. You don't need to carry me anymore. Let's go home. But I said I'd carry you wherever you wanted to go. Pearl smiled. You can owe me. Pearl smiled. Well, you can owe me. It's a promise you'll have to deliver in the future. Okay. The two got back into the Rolls Royce, and Danny leaned over her to buckle Pearl's seatbelt. She pushed something into his mouth. Danny chewed on it, raising his eyebrows. What is it? Pearl held the rose in her hand, her eyes twinkling. Chocolate? Don't you like it? No. Danny didn't have a sweet tooth at all. Pearl was momentarily taken aback by his bluntness. Well, even if you don't like it, you have to eat it. You were just complaining about being hungry. Some sugar will do you good, perk you up. Danny gave her a loaded look. Oh, you're concerned about my hunger now. Weren't you just out having fun with Cedric Richardson over dinner? Pearl opened her mouth, then paused and shut it again. He was clearly starting to settle their past scores. 
This petty man. Mr. Simon, how about I cook you a meal once we're home? Sharp as a tack, Pearl shifted the topic. But Danny kept her pinned under his gaze. He was still leaned over her. You were just having dinner with Cedric, he said in a low growl. His eyes flicked down to her lips. Don't you have anything for me to eat? Pearl swallowed and looked up at him through her lashes. Breathlessly, she said, What do you fancy, Mr. Simon? Danny leaned in and closed the gap between their mouths. He took her plump bottom lip in his teeth and bit down, gentle yet firm. A whimper escaped Pearl's mouth, and she felt the hairs on the back of her neck stand up. This tastes pretty good to me, Danny murmured, before pressing his lips back to hers and conquering her tongue with his own. Episode 260, Tender Loving Care Pearl blushed. Her eyes grasped at Danny's sweater, feeling rock-solid pecs beneath the silky cashmere. Danny didn't just look great, he felt amazing too. When he surrounded her like this, the smell, the taste, the feel of him all over her. Pearl felt like all her senses were drowning in him, and every rational thought disappeared from her mind. She had lost track of time when they came up for air. Danny cupped her cheek in his large palm, dotting soft little kisses across her lips and nose. Your place or mine? As soon as they got back, Pearl went to the kitchen to make some soup. Since his high fever had only just subsided, Danny needed something light and nourishing. She chopped up some chicken and veggies, sprinkling in herbs and spices as the pot simmered. Mmm, perfect. The soup bubbled fragrantly, looking almost as delicious as it smelt. Danny, the soup's ready. There was no response. Pearl dished out two bowls and took the soup out into the living room. She paused in the doorway and smiled. Danny was sprawled on the sofa, his long legs across the coffee table in front of him. His eyes were shut and his broad chest rose and fell in the slow rhythm of deep sleep. His hair had fallen over his face, covering the bruise under his eye, and his handsome features looked unusually pale. After taking off the cold, arrogant mask he wore, Danny's exhaustion finally had a chance to be felt, and he drifted off almost as soon as he sat down to rest. Pearl felt a sudden urge to cry. She felt so bad for this man. She gently placed the soup on the coffee table and padded over to the front door. Danny was so tired that he hadn't even changed out of his leather shoes. She fetched a pair of men's slippers and went back to crouch beside the sofa. Slowly, she undid his laces and eased his shoes off one at a time. Danny was a light sleeper, even in exhaustion, and he jolted awake at her touch. He looked down at the figure crouched beside him, and the tension melted from his body. His eyes softened as he took in the scene at his feet. Pearl was changing his shoes for him. Her skin glowed beneath the soft yellow lighting, and she had tied her silky black hair into a ponytail while she cooked, exposing her graceful neck. The pink cartoon apron and the strands of hair that had fallen loose around her cheeks only added to the picture of domestic sweetness. He liked the feeling of Pearl taking care of him. Three years ago, the booming economy was reaching an era-defining peak. Danny was shrewd in seizing the opportunity before him, and he'd risen to a dizzying height of wealth and power. Every financial and society magazine in the country was trying to get a hold of him, but he did his best to stay out of the limelight. Back then, everything he touched became news, and gossip sprang up wherever he went. Even then, he still harbored a gentleness deep inside of him. But it had been a long time since he'd let it see the light of day. Tonight, he let that guard down. The gentleness bloomed on his face as he watched this beautiful woman change his shoes for him. Her movements were quiet and tender, filled with love as she tried not to disturb his rest. What would it cost to make this last forever? This scene, this moment, would stay etched on his heart for eternity. Pearl glanced up at his face. You're awake? She gave him a radiant smile. Danny shut his eyes and breathed in deeply. Mm-hmm. 
The soup's ready. You should eat it while it's still warm. Pearl passed over a bowl and spoon, then settled herself on the sofa beside him. Danny took the soup gratefully, spooning a generous portion into his mouth. He closed his eyes and let out a satisfied moan. Is it good? Pearl asked. Danny nodded. It's so good. Your mom never cooked you soup? No. Pearl felt her heart twist again, overcome by pity for the neglected child Danny had been. Danny opened his eyes and took in her expression with a raised eyebrow. What kind of look is that? So my mother never cooked me soup. That's what the kitchen staff were for. Pearl blinked and shook her head in resignation. Episode 261, Damaged Goods. Pearl didn't feel bad for Danny anymore. The man was an expert at spoiling the mood. Danny finished the soup off quickly, spooning every last drop from the bowl. Pearl took the empty dishes and stood up. I'll go wash up. Danny stretched out a muscular arm and grabbed her slender waist. Without exerting too much strength, he pulled her onto his lap, burrowing his head into her neck and taking a deep breath of her fragrant scent. Hmm, wash the dishes tomorrow. Pearl was caught off guard as she fell onto Danny's lap, and the empty soup bowls wobbled in her hands. As she tried to straighten up, she accidentally knocked the wound on Danny's chest. He stifled a groan of pain. Pearl paused, recalling the punch he'd taken from Cedric earlier on. Has your injury opened up again? Danny, let me see. Without waiting for a response, she put down the bowls and pulled open his coat, revealing the green-knit sweater inside that was completely soaked in blood. His coat had served as a cover, and from the way he had acted so normally, it was hard to tell he was injured at all. Pearl gasped, Danny, your wound has split open again. Why didn't you say something? Danny tightened his arm around her waist, drawing her closer and flashing a flirtatious grin. If you stopped going on dates with other men, I'd probably sustain fewer injuries. But Pearl didn't think this was a laughing matter. Danny had discharged himself from the hospital, got into a fight, and invited a punch that would worsen an already serious injury. And even then, he insisted on carrying her around New York on his back, all without caring to mention that his condition was getting worse. The man had no concern for his own life. And now, he was actually joking about it. He was so infuriating. I'll get the first aid kit, Pearl huffed. That wound needs redressing. When she returned with the medical kit, Danny seemed a little more chastened. He had stripped off his blood-soaked shirt and was sitting up on the couch, his torso bare beneath the low lights. His perfectly tanned skin exuded a healthy glow, and his taut abdomen showed a firm six-pack. In glaring contrast, his chest was marred by a bloody wound and torn stitches. The skin looked raw and angry and Danny used his bunched-up shirt to stem the fresh blood oozing from it. Pearl took out some gauze and cleaned away the blood before sterilizing the cut. She dressed the wound, gently smoothing tape across Danny's pecs to hold the bandage in place. Does it hurt? Pearl's long eyelashes fluttered with worry as she softly pressed the tape to Danny's chest. Danny, on the other hand, felt a warm satisfaction at seeing her so concerned. It hurts. Really? Do you need me to head out and get you some painkillers? Pearl stood and turned to leave, but found she was trapped. She had settled between Danny's spread legs to dress his wound, and now his muscular thighs tightened around her, holding her in place. His arms snaked around her waist and pulled her body back to him. Pearl chided him softly. What are you doing? Danny's lips brushed her ear. I don't want painkillers from the pharmacy. The only medicine I need is you. Pearl twisted in his arms. You need rest, Danny, not more exercise. Danny nuzzled his nose behind her earlobe and breathed huskily against her neck. Pearl... The feel of his lips whispering her name against her skin left Pearl weak. She raked her hands slowly through his hair, 
turning his face to hers so she could claim his lips. Danny's arms pulled her tight against him, and his breathing became heavier as his mouth devoured hers. Pearl sunk into the warm pleasure spreading through her before gently pushing Danny back against the sofa. She dropped a sweet kiss to the tip of his nose and laughed. <laughs> Mr. Simon, you're damaged goods, you know. Episode 262. Off to the finals. Danny narrowed his eyes as he realized that she was teasing him. He gripped her waist and rolled her over, letting both of them topple back across the huge couch. Danny's strong frame towered over Pearl, his arms caging her in as her silky black hair scattered back across the cushions. Her smooth skin glowed with a luminous radiance, and her lips were red and swollen from being kissed. Danny lowered himself, wanting to kiss her again. But a delicate hand interrupted him, blocking his lips with the teasing tips of her fingers. Pearl's eyes were bright and clear. She gazed at Danny lovingly, even while pouting her lips and chiding him, Danny, you're injured. You're not allowed to do anything stupid. Danny slid a hand behind Pearl's neck and softly kissed the palm still covering his mouth. He rolled onto his side, resting on an elbow and running his eyes over Pearl's face. Baby, I'm fine. You made sure of it. Besides, you've already got me half naked. You don't need to fret anymore. Just tell me one thing. Did you miss me? Pearl rolled onto her side, pressing herself against his hard body and up the bare skin of his back. I missed you, she whispered against his lips. Her silky hair brushed against Danny's jaw, making him shiver as it tickled his skin. He stretched out his slender fingers and tucked the loose strands behind Pearl's ear. Everything about her was soft, tantalizing. Danny's eyes flicked between hers, as if trying to memorize every inch of her. He couldn't believe he'd nearly lost this. His head tipped forward, and he buried his lips in hers. Pearl let herself roll back on the couch, pulling Danny along with her. The weight of his body pressed her into the sofa in a way that felt so intimate and secure. When her lips eventually began to go numb, Pearl buried her head in Danny's chest and sighed. Ah, oh, he smelled so clean and masculine. Danny's Adam's apple bobbed in his throat as he ran his fingers along her cheekbones. You're trying to brush me off with a kiss, huh? Pearl didn't look up. The kiss had left her melting, too warm and cozy to move. The only thought in her mind was that she wanted to stay in these arms forever. When your injuries get better, she murmured into his chest, I'll give you a lot more than that. Danny smirked, his voice deep and low. I'm flying out on business tomorrow morning. I'll be gone for around a week. The finals for the DHA Queen begin in a few days, and the shoots at the Borgata in Atlantic City. You can head there first, and I'll come find you as soon as I'm done, hmm? The finals for the DHA Queen? Pearl frowned. She'd already been blacklisted by Oliver. Her teeth worried at her bottom lip, almost drawing blood as she pondered how to break the news to Danny. Two slender fingers lifted her chin, and Pearl made eye contact with a penetrating gaze. Danny's eyes were sharp, but his voice remained calm as he asked, What's the matter? Are you hiding something from me? Pearl wrapped her hands around his strong waist and hugged him close. Instead of answering his question, she asked one of her own. When are you going to break up with Clarice? In the public eye, she's still your fiancé. Until it's officially over, I'll have to stay a secret. It's like we're having an affair. Her change of topic worked. Danny's smirk dropped instantly, and he kissed her gently on the forehead. Pearl, trust me. I'll take care of everything soon enough. Since you threw away half the antidote, we need to get hold of the other half. Pearl stared into Danny's eyes and nodded. Okay, I trust you. 
When Pearl woke the next morning, Danny had already left. She got a notification saying the DHA management had released her name, officially beginning the finals. Pearl didn't know how it happened, but she wasn't about to pass up the opportunity to fight for the DHA crown. The next couple of days were a whirlwind of packing, manicures, and making last-minute arrangements with Janet. Pearl's stomach fluttered nervously as her car pulled up outside the towering luxury casino resort. As she walked through the dazzling entrance, Pearl spotted a familiar face. Lana, what are you doing here? Episode 263, Roomies. Lana turned at the sound of her name and hurried over, relieved to see a familiar face. She gave Pearl a quick hug, then raised an eyebrow and shrugged helplessly. I didn't have a choice. My mother-in-law forced me to come. Lana was truly helpless. Mrs. Wright had heard about James attending the DHA trip and had immediately gone to find Lana, going as far as packing her daughter-in-law's bags and putting her on her own private plane. Pearl gladly held on to Lana's hands. Well, thank God you're here. You can accompany me. That's for sure. That DHA crown is yours, Lana answered in determination. Hearing her confident words, a radiant smile burst out on Pearl's face. Pearl, quick, come and see. Everyone participating in the trip has assembled, Janet whispered. Pearl lifted her head and saw the heirs of New York's wealthiest and most influential families congregated in the gilded Borgata lobby. James, Mark, and Max were all there. Clarice and Rosalind stood together, and even Xander and Ginny were there. Xander was talking to Mr. Meissen, the owner of the resort. Mr. Meissen was in his 30s and had a straightforward personality. It seemed the two were more than acquainted and that he was a friend of Xander's. Meissen took Xander's arm in a familiar gesture as he led him into a private bar reserved exclusively for the DHA party. The rest of the guests were ushered the same way by a gaggle of glamorous casino hostesses. Hello, everyone, Mr. Meissen called out once they were all settled. I'd first like to welcome you all to the Borgata this evening. It's an honor to be hosting the DHA Queen Finals this year. Before we get started, I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce you all to someone special. She's no stranger to DHA Simons herself. Everyone, my fiancé. Mr. Meissen's fiancé? Who could it be? A familiar figure appeared in front of the crowd. Unbelievable! It was... Sally! Pearl hadn't seen Sally in a while and had been happy to forget all about her little sister's existence. Despite knowing what a grasping schemer Sally was, Pearl was still surprised to find she had bagged herself a new fiancé in such a short period of time. Sally had recovered well, and her beautiful face was glowing. She wore a backless, floor-length purple gown, and any sign of her previous grievances had completely disappeared. Mr. Meissen walked beside Sally with steady footsteps, holding her narrow waist in an intimate gesture. Sally Bear, these are our distinguished guests from New York. They're going to be staying with us throughout the DHA Finals. Sally scanned the guests with a calm and elegant gaze. When her eyes landed on Pearl, she gave an eerie smile. Hello, everyone. I'd like to extend my warmest welcome to all my guests. Your rooms have been prepared for you, and you have some time to rest before the activities begin. Miss Layton, are you sharing a room with Mr. Simon? Everyone's gaze landed on Clarice. After all, she was Danny's fiance. Pearl's heart skipped a beat. Danny would be sharing a room with Clarice? On the night of the engagement ceremony, Pearl hadn't had the chance to confront Danny about the deal he'd made. Had he slept with Clarice? Clarice batted her eyelashes and bit her lower lip in a show of shyness. Rosalind piped up for her. Of course. After all, Mr. Simon and Clarice are getting married soon. 
Why, of course, Sally simpered coquettishly at Mr. Meissen. Miss Layton is Mr. Simon's fiance. We couldn't possibly keep the two apart. The staff were ushered forward to show the guests to their rooms. Along the hallway, Pearl and Lana were entering their suite when they met Rosalind and Clarice. When she spotted Pearl, Rosalind raised her voice and curled her lips into a disdainful sneer. Clary, babe, the night of your engagement ceremony, you slept with Danny, right? Clarice blushed and replied, Yes, we made love. Rosalind waggled her eyebrows and went on. I heard Danny's mother even prepared you a tonic to help you get pregnant. Clarice giggled and nodded. Clary, you better be careful, babes. You could already be pregnant with Danny's son. The future heir of the Simon family is a treasure beyond words. Rosie! Clarice gave a mellow, dramatic gasp. You should be careful with that loose tongue of yours. She tittered pretentiously before turning her gaze toward Pearl. Lana observed the women's double act with a cool stare before whispering into Pearl's ear. After you left their engagement party, Clarice disappeared for a while. When she returned to the party, she was wearing a different outfit, accessorized by a trail of hickeys that she didn't bother trying to hide. Judged by the smug look on her face, I'm certain that she had sex with someone that night. Episode 246, Homewrecker. Clarice had sex with someone, and who could that someone be? Other than Danny, there seemed to be no one else left. Pearl's face paled in an instant. She knew he had only done it for the antidote, but she still couldn't accept the reality of it. An image of Danny pressing himself down on Clarice rose, unbidden into Pearl's mind, and a nauseous feeling gripped her stomach, twisting it into angry knots. She felt like she might throw up. Rosalind walked over, her face alight with a smug arrogance. Pearl, have you heard? Danny belongs to Clarice now. Not only are they engaged, but it seems like they consummated the marriage a little early. A word of advice, have some dignity and stop acting like a shameless homewrecker. Homewrecker? This word reverberated through Pearl's mind on endless repeat, leaving a bitter taste in her mouth. Glaring at Rosalind and Clarice, she suppressed the anger simmering below the surface. The pair of them were totally messed up, their morals twisted and deformed, and she was determined not to sink to their level. Interesting advice, Rosalind. Here's some in return. People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Rosalind spat. Before Pearl could reply, James walked over from the elevator. Come on, Pearl, said Lana. We don't need to worry about these two idiots. It's been a long day. Let's go get some rest. Lana began guiding Pearl into the suite. Mrs. Wright, whose room are you entering? A deep voice boomed. James's tall stature cast a shadow over the two women. Pearl lifted her head and looked at him. All she could see was James's cold gaze fixated on her. Pearl was at a loss for words. His look made her feel like she'd been caught red-handed having an illicit affair. She took her head to brush the feeling off, and her clear eyes filled with craftiness. Hmm, was James jealous? Last time, she had been made out to be a pervert just for holding hands with Lana. Now Lana was going to sleep in her room, and James just couldn't hold himself back. His expression and palpable frustration made her want to laugh out loud. Had James really fallen that hard for Lana? Lana, who do you want to sleep with tonight? Pearl hooked her arm through Lana's as she asked the question. James stared coldly at the two women's linked arms, and his lips curled into a snarl. Mrs. Wright, consider carefully before answering. The words dripped with an unspoken threat. Mr. Wright, Pearl smiled, am I right in thinking that you'd also like to spend the night with Lana? Rosalind's face darkened, and even Clarice was evidently affected, her expression sobering in an instant. 
Pearl bit down on her supple lips with her white teeth, pretending to be put in a difficult position. There are only two beds in the room. Janet will need to take one, and I'll take the other. Lana, you don't have any space to sleep. Pearl wittedly blinked her eyes, keeping her gaze locked challengingly on James. Hey, I know. We could share a bed. Lana, I can finally cuddle you to sleep. Pearl reached out to pull Lana into a hug, but she grasped only thin air. A large palm stretched out and grabbed Lana's wrist, tugging her forcefully into a different set of arms. James gave Pearl a ferocious glare and pulled Lana away. Jealousy was quite unbecoming on a man, and James Wright was an extremely jealous man. Pearl turned around to enter her room. Pearl, Max made his way over. Pearl stopped, welcoming Max with her beautifully clear eyes. Hello, Mr. Glenn. Max winced at her formal address. There were so many things he wanted to say, but the words stayed stuck in his throat and he lowered his head. A sarcastic voice rang out. Well, well, isn't it the stunner great at seducing men? Episode 265. More than just friends? Mark had arrived. In his hands, he held a room key card. Pearl saw the number and realized his room was right opposite hers. With one hand in his pocket, Mark gave Pearl a sideways glance, scoffing and making fun of her at the same time. Pearl was affronted. Mr. Young, did I seduce you? Mark's jaw fell open. If I didn't seduce you, you'd better keep your opinions to yourself and remain a quiet onlooker. Just watch the drama unfold without a word. Pearl stepped into her room and slammed the door in his face. Mark's handsome face darkened. He walked over and kicked the closed door. Bang! The door stayed shut, and Mark's foot hurt so much he wondered if he had broken a toe. Damn it, Pearl! James pulled Lana into his suite, throwing her on the bed and lifting his fingers to rip off his tie and unbutton the top of his shirt. His deep breathing seemed like the only thing holding his composure in place. James planted his palms on the bed and leaned over Lana. His cold gaze raked over her beautiful face. Tell me, Mrs. Wright, what's going on with you and Pearl? James lowered his muscular bill to cage Lana's body in his arms. She couldn't escape, so she batted her long eyelashes in a show of innocence. Really, she hadn't been an active part of the drama just now. She pushed herself up on her elbows and looked at James with composure. Mr. Wright, what do you mean? You're playing dumb with me, huh? You apparently suffer from sexual dysfunction. Or is it just that you're more interested in women than men? Lana raised an eyebrow and asked, I'm intrigued. What exactly do you think Pearl and I have been up to? James stuttered, caught off guard by the question. Then his expression darkened and his brown lips turned pale. It must be hard being so shameless. Truly, you've widened my horizons. You've implied that Pearl and I are having some kind of secret affair. All I want to know is what exactly you think that involves. Genuinely, I'm trying to understand what you've been imagining in that pretty little head of yours. You say that I'm shameless, but really, who's the shameless one here? She was nothing, if not outspoken. James's muscular chest heaved with barely restrained rage, pumping hot blood through his body and making him boil inside. Just as he was about to explode, a hand slid around his neck as another caressed his short hair. Okay, hubby, I'm a little tired today and I don't want to fight with you. Be good, okay? The way she caressed his head and asked him to behave obediently was just like how she might coax a wayward puppy. James's rage instantly deflated, and he preened under her attention. He loved it when she called him hubby, even if she was doing it half-heartedly and coaxing him like a little puppy. Pearl and I didn't do much of anything before you charged over to catch us red-handed and accuse us of adultery. 
How about Clarice and Rosalind, though? They're always together. They're practically joined at the hip. I really do wonder how Rosalind actually survived under your brutality. Clarice and Rosalind? James was stunned. He had never cared or spared much thought for the pair. Even if they were always hanging out together, he didn't think it strange, but when Pearl was around Lana, he had never failed to flare up. Every time he saw her, he had to find fault with it. Don't try to change the topic. How could those artificial sisters compare with you? You and Pearl better watch yourselves. If I found out that you've done anything with Pearl, I'll destroy you both. Episode 266 Love Juice James got up and entered the bathroom. Lana flopped back on the bed and rolled her eyes. Why was he so against Pearl? His deep voice echoed through the bathroom door. Go in my suitcase and bring me some underwear. Underwear? Mr. Wright, can you guarantee you're not trying to seduce me with a pair of briefs? You can choose not to bring them to me, James replied, but then I'll have to come out naked, and in that case, I'll have to conclude that you're trying to seduce me. Lana sighed and opened the black suitcase. It was filled with James's clothing, all folded into exact rectangles and neatly organized. She found his underwear tucked into a secret compartment. She pulled out a pair at random and went to close the suitcase, but her fingertips brushed a hard object, apparently hidden inside another secret compartment. What was James hiding in there? Why did he have to be so secretive, squirreling things away inside the smaller inner pockets? Lana glanced toward the closed bathroom door and heard the sound of running water. James was still showering. She quickly unzipped the secret compartment and pulled out the object inside. It was a bottle of lubricant. Lubricant? He had actually brought lubricant? Click. There was a gust of cold air as the bathroom door suddenly opened. James walked out with a towel wrapped around his waist, his torso bare and glistening with moisture. His voice was tinged with irritation. Why are you taking so long? He trailed off as he saw the unzipped secret compartment and the bottle in Lana's hands. Indignation flashed across his face and he stormed over, giving the suitcase a callous kick to slam it shut. He gave Lana a hard stare. Who gave you permission to rummage through my personal belongings? Lana smirked. <laughs> you did. You asked me to bring you underwear. For some reason, you chose to pack it in a hidden compartment. I was merely doing as you asked. You! Mr. Wright, is that the sound of shame and anger or guilt? What exactly is this? Lana waved the lubricant bottle at him. James's jaw tightened and he thrust an arm out to snatch the lubricant from her hands. But Lana skillfully deflected him and spun around. Did you purposely leak the news of this trip to your mother so she'd make sure I came too? And then you planned to make use of this? Lana squinted at the label on the bottle. Love juice? Honestly, I assumed you were too proud to have to rely on lube to get a woman to sleep with you. It seems I overestimated your capabilities. When did you become so lowly? James's handsome features were twisted with anger and embarrassment. He would admit to tipping his mother off about the trip. He knew his mom stood a better chance than him of getting Lana to come along. But he still couldn't figure out how he lost his mind and driven to the pharmacy to buy a bottle of lubricant. Before he knew it, he was at the counter paying for the damn thing. Faced with Lana's disdain, he felt like an utter fool. James grabbed Lana's narrow waist and pulled her into his arms. As he stared into her eyes, he meant every word he murmured to her. Lana, you're gonna beg me to have sex with you one day. It was time for dinner. The visitors had gathered in their private dining room, where Mr. Meissen was laughing lightheartedly. Miss Brown, Miss Crowley, since the two of you are here for a competition, your challenge this evening is to fix dinner for everyone. The guests will have the right to choose their preferred side, and whoever has the most votes will win. Episode 267 
something only bad girls do. Okay, Pearl and Rosalind both entered the kitchen. Pearl took a glance at the ingredients allocated to her and saw that there was a decent variety. Fully confident in her culinary skills, she washed her hands and started to prepare the ingredients. But a problem arose when she realized that she hadn't been given any kind of seasoning. Where was the salt, sugar, herbs, and spices? Pearl wrinkled her forehead. Mr. Meissen, I don't have any seasonings. How am I supposed to cook without them? At Mr. Meissen's side, Sally tittered and said in a syrupy voice, Miss Brown, this is a test of your adaptability. It's up to you to prove yourself. Pearl rolled her eyes and retorted, So how come Rosalind isn't being tested in the same way? She has everything right there. Sally pouted her red lips in an expression full of grievance and clutched at Mr. Meissen's arm. Meissen, Miss Brown is scolding me. Mr. Meissen's gaze was fixed on Sally drawn in by her coquettish ways. As she rubbed herself against his muscular chest, he slid a large palm behind her back and down to fondle her behind. Miss Brown, if you are unsatisfied with the conditions, you may choose to withdraw from the competition. Pearl watched the sleazy action in front of her and understood what was going on. Sally was riding on Mr. Meissen's coattails and making things difficult for her in every possible way. With Sally's unchecked interference, Pearl was bound to lose the competition. She had to find a way to get rid of her scheming little sister. But Mr. Meissen was the host of this round, and he doted on Sally. Getting her out of the way would be no easy feat. Pearl could only slowly strategize and her mind churned with possibilities as she turned back to the kitchen. Sally watched in satisfaction as Pearl admitted defeat and retreated to the kitchen. She smiled and winked at the man fondling her. Meissen, you're the best. Mr. Meissen's hand wandered over her exposed back as he caressed her silky skin, and he slowly raised his other hand to touch her button nose. And how are you going to thank me? Hmm, Sally Bear? How would she thank him? Bam! Sally dropped her phone on the carpet and bent over to pick it up. She made sure that on the way back up, her face brushed against Mr. Meissen's thighs. The man watched in delight, completely aroused. He couldn't wait to throw Sally onto his bed. Mr. Meissen lived in the casino, surrounded by women who were professional provocateurs. His staff were highly trained and well-paid to lure the wealthy clientele into spending as much money as possible during their stay. Sally was different, though. She didn't work for him. She just seemed to turn up one day and fall for him, drawing him in until he could no longer restrain himself. Though she looked like an innocent goddess on the outside, she was a vixen inside. And when she appeared to seduce him, her every action was so alluring that he couldn't help but fall in love with her. Mr. Meissen was caught up with Sally teasing him until a cold-eyed stare landed on them both. Ginny was wearing a white dress, with her silky hair tumbling over her delicate shoulders. Her youthful face was emotionless as she observed Sally nuzzling her face around Mr. Meissen's pants and laughing. A tall figure blocked Ginny's line of vision, and Xander placed a chocolate pudding in her hands. Ginny, try some of this. Ginny turned her attention from Sally to Xander's handsome face and asked, What is she doing? What was Sally doing? Xander cleared his throat, his brown eyes crinkled in wry amusement. She's doing something that only bad girls do. You don't need to know the details. Jenny didn't ask any more and started to eat the pudding. As she pulled the spoon from her mouth, a smear of chocolate was left at the corner of her lips. Xander pulled out a tissue to wipe it away. His rough fingertips inadvertently brushed Jenny's lips, and she lifted her head to look at him, sticking out her tongue to lick his finger. Episode 268, The Cook-Off. 
Xander's perfectly crafted face darkened in an instant, and he glared at Ginny with his brown eyes. Displeasure and disapproval were reflected back at her as he silently warned her about her actions. Ginny lowered her head and continued eating the pudding without another word. Pearl walked out of the kitchen and smiled. Hello everyone, I've prepared dinner. Tonight I'll be serving steak and vegetables. The male wheeled out a trolley laden with food. Sally piped up, her voice full of disdain. Miss Brown, you've only prepared steak and vegetables? You don't even need culinary skills to make that. How dare you even serve something like this? It's disrespectful to the competition itself. Pearl raised her brow while looking over at Sally. Miss Bowles, you can choose not to eat what I've made, but I strongly recommend that you don't. Vegetables and protein are well known to help with weight loss. You've gained some weight since I last saw you, haven't you? Gained weight? Sally instantly lowered her head to take a look at her figure. Pearl, I want steak and veg. Almost immediately, Lana went to sit beside Pearl. The culinary contest was really a popularity competition. Whoever received more votes would win. Without the basic necessities, there was no way Pearl could turn something out of nothing. The only thing she could prepare that was palatable was steak and braised veg. Lana was her best friend, and Pearl knew she could count on her for support, though she wasn't certain about the others. Meanwhile, the smell coming from Rosalind's stove had wafted out of the kitchen when Pearl had come out. The aroma alone was causing the hungry crowd to salivate. Pearl, I'll have the steak and veg too. Max sat down at Pearl's table. Pearl smiled gratefully at Max. The warm smile on her lips caused two people to feel uneasy, and one of them was Sally. Although Sally was already engaged to Mr. Meissen, the truth was she still couldn't get over Max. In all aspects, Max was better than Mr. Meissen, whether it was personality, intelligence, or appearance. Moreover, she had suffered a miscarriage for Max, and seeing her ex-fiancé drawn to Pearl, she couldn't help but feel her heart twist in bitterness. Another person who was displeased was, surprisingly, Mark. Mark snorted. Why did he feel unhappy when he witnessed Pearl smiling at her ex-boyfriend? He hurriedly got up and sat beside her. Pearl looked at Mark, full of suspicion. Mr. Young, are you sitting in the wrong spot? Shouldn't he be sitting beside Rosalind? Mark crossed his legs impatiently, rushing her along with all the grandeur of a king. Hurry up and serve, I'm hungry. Another person approached Pearl's table. Ginny held her plate in her hands and sat down. Pearl looked at Ginny. The girl was barely 18 years old, but already behaved like an ice queen. She had a heart as cool and exquisite as the snow in winter. Pearl picked up a huge piece of steak and placed it on Ginny's plate. Here you go, Jenny. You could do with a hearty meal. But she wasn't sure whether it was because Jenny was Danny's little sister or because the girl just invited sympathy. But Pearl had grown quite fond of Jenny. By now, half the crowd had crossed over to Pearl's side of the dining room. Xander didn't move. He continued his conversation with Mr. Meissen while they drank. It wasn't clear what they talked about, but when Xander laughed, his eyes exuded the enigmatic charisma of a man who had seen more than his fair share of the world. James stood up to take a call in a dark corner of the dining room. Perhaps he was dealing with work, and he placed one hand in his trouser pocket, leaving everyone to mull over his perfect back view. Sally clenched her fists in anger. She had anticipated that Pearl would easily lose the contest, but two of the major families had already taken Pearl's side. There was still James to go, but since Lana was over by Pearl, there was no telling yet which side he would eventually lean towards. Biting her lip, Sally gave the waiter a signal. Episode 269, The Poison Chalice. The waiter nodded his head and served the drinks. Miss Brown, your wine. Thank you. Everyone, let's have a toast. Hold on, Pearl, is that champagne? Let me have a taste. I'm dying for some fizz. Lana exchanged glasses with Pearl. Sally's heart skipped a beat and she wanted to speak up, 
but it was too late. Lana gulped down a mouthful of champagne. Five minutes later, Rosalind came out of the kitchen. She had attended culinary lessons especially for this trip and had whipped up eight elaborate courses. The smell wafting from her dishes was enticing enough, and when the cart was wheeled over, the guests saw that they were as tantalizing as they smelled. James hung up his phone call and walked back over with his phone in his hands. Xander put his wine glass down and asked, Mr. Wright, whose side are you choosing? Rosalind and Clarice looked at James with clear expectations. James's cold eyes scanned the room and stopped on Lana. He towered over her and asked, What did you drink? Why is your face so red? Lana's face was red? Pearl instantly turned to look and put her palm on Lana's cheek. James was right. Lana's beautiful face was burning hot, and it had flushed a bright red. You've only had half a glass of champagne. Why do you look drunk already? Pearl frowned. Mark squinted his devilish eyes and smirked. Obviously, there's something wrong with the champagne. Lana had realized something was wrong, and she felt an irrational need to remove her top. She tried to unbutton her shirt, but her movements were awkward as her fingers fumbled over the clasps. James went down on one knee, using his hands to grab hers and stop her from removing her clothes. With gentle hands, he caressed her burning face with his fingertips. His large palm was suddenly on her face, and his strong masculine scent filled Lana's nose. She felt strangely relieved by his presence around her. Lana's eyes turned flirtatious and seductive, staring right at him. James, am I drugged? Do you really need me to answer that? James answered coldly. Suddenly, James bolted upright. Everyone stop eating. He kicked the table hard, flipping it over and spilling all the dishes on the red carpet. At the flick of a switch, James had exploded, and his dark aura silenced the room in an instant. Rosalind had the worst expression on her face as her carefully crafted dishes crashed to the floor. Mr. Meissen, there's something wrong with this glass of champagne. Someone here just tried to drug my wife, and you'd better be able to offer me an explanation for it. James's frosty gaze landed on Mr. Meissen in barely restrained anger. Mr. Meissen's eyes swiveled to the waiter who had served the drinks. The waiter's eyes jumped guiltily to Sally, desperately seeking help. The eye contact was so unsubtle that everyone watching could infer the real culprit. Mr. Meissen, the drug was in the glass that was meant for Pearl. It's clear that there's someone who's trying to harm Miss Brown. Max voiced everyone's thoughts. Pearl twisted her fingers together anxiously. Lana had taken the blow for her. Forcing down the worry, Pearl looked at Sally and Mr. Meissen. Mr. Meissen, those drinks were served by this waiter, but he wouldn't have the motive or the courage to spike the beverages himself. There must be someone behind the scenes. I believe that once we interrogate the server, we can find out who the culprit behind this really is. So 270. Locked in. The waiter hurriedly dropped to his knees and begged profusely, Mr. Meissen, sir, please don't fire me. I really need this job. Mr. Meissen had already inferred something from the waiter's gaze, and he looked at Sally in deliberation. Sally's face was pale, and she discreetly tugged on Mr. Meissen's sleeve. Okay, Mr. Meissen clapped his hands. Rest assured that I will investigate the incident. Guards, take the server away. Hold on, Pearl spoke up. Mr. Meissen, why do you have to take him away? Why not interrogate him here? This is my establishment and he is employed by me. It is at my discretion how to interrogate him. Rest assured, I'll provide you all with a satisfactory explanation shortly, Mr. Meissen insisted again. Anyone with a brain could see that Mr. Meissen was protecting Sally. Xander stood up, breaking the tense atmosphere like a sly old fox. Since Mr. Meissen has already made himself clear, we'll let him handle the affair. Mr. Wright, the most important thing now is to get Mrs. Wright somewhere where she can rest and recover. James retracted his frightening gaze and lifted Lana up without further hesitation. In the room, 
James placed Lana on the huge bed. Her beautiful face was burning hot and increasingly red. A doctor rushed in behind them and quickly started unpacking a number of bottles and instruments. Pearl stood beside the bed, looking at Lana anxiously while feeling terrible inside. Lana, don't be afraid. Just hold on. The doctor will have you fixed up in no time. The doctor ran through a series of quick checks, then administered a concoction of medicines. Not to worry, Mrs. Wright. I've given you something for the pain and the nausea, as well as something to counter the effects of the drug. Now just look forward for me. The doctor shone a light into Lana's eyes and felt her pulse. That's it. The medicine seems to be working nicely. How does your head feel, Mrs. Wright? Oh, Lana groaned. Like crap, but it's definitely starting to get better. Excellent. A bit of rest and plenty of fluids and you'll be right as rain. The doctor packed up his things and Pearl walked him out to the corridor. Thank you, doctor. Lana wasn't meant... She was interrupted by the door closing loudly behind her. Bam! James had slammed the sweet door shut and locked it from the inside. Pearl stood gaping outside the door with the doctor beside her. Pearl, how's Lana? A crowd from the dining room had come up to check on Lana. Pearl looked at Max, still taken aback. James just kicked me out of the room and locked it from the inside. Clarice and Rosalind's expressions turned to ice. Placing both hands in his pockets, Mark shrugged and looked around. Everyone should just leave. Hiring a doctor was pointless. My man James is ready and willing with the antidote already. Mark looked at the doctor meaningfully. You should prescribe Mr. Wright some tonics to restore his vitality. Those two were crazy back on their honeymoon. In fact, we should have a bet. Will Lana destroy James or will James leave Lana unable to get out of bed? His eyebrows waggled lasciviously. Why do you even need to ask such crude questions? Pearl huffed. Then she mumbled, Obviously, Lana would crush him. Mark stared at Pearl evilly. I'll take that bet, Miss Brown. What are the stakes if you lose? Stakes? Pearl raised an eyebrow at Mark. What do you want? Looking at her beautiful eyes, Mark bent down and whispered in her ear, If you lose, you have to kiss me. Sending him to Africa as punishment didn't seem to have worked. He still coveted his best friend's girlfriend. Rosalind's face became distorted. The thought of James and Lana having sex just behind that door made her heart wrench in pain and envy. James was hers. Episode 271. Beg Me. Clarice was also unhappy. James had stayed by her side all these years, but now he was having sex with Lana, even while she was outside their room. But then another thought crossed her mind, and she smiled, feeling excited and jubilant inside. Judging from the way James looked at her, she knew it. James was still obsessed with her. It was her that he wanted, and only her. Inside the Room Lana pushed herself up on her slender arms and looked at the man beside the door. James, what are you trying to do? Night had fallen, and the room was lit with a faint yellow ambiance. James stood tall in the entry, sizing her up with his cold eyes, a hint of flirtation playing in them. His lips formed a charming arch as he spoke. Nothing much, I just locked the two of us in the same room. Lana climbed off the bed and crossed to the door, but James leaned against it lazily, blocking her exit. Arrogant brute! James, don't you realize that you're being a colossal prick? I don't think so. I didn't even mention anything about having sex with you. He bent down, his hot breath whispering beside her ear. Beg me. I'll only have sex with you if you beg me. Lana gave him a cold-eyed stare, lifting her arm to give him a slap. But she didn't manage to make the hit. James caught hold of her wrist in midair and yanked, pulling her body to his muscular chest. He held her waist with his large palms and squeezed, lowering his head to look at her seductive red lips. 
Lana, you finally landed in my arms, huh? Lana felt her body getting increasingly hot as she was pressed against his hard torso, her senses overwhelmed by his clean, masculine scent. The smell of him was all over her, breaking through her rationality and making her want to be closer to him. But her mind was still sober, and she smirked, Do you know what you look like right now? She stood on her tiptoes, and her warm breath caressed his jaw. A free, high-grade male prostitute deprived of sex. James's eyes flashed in anger. Lana's hands were on his muscular chest. She pushed him away and went into the bathroom. The room was quiet. James stood beside the counter holding a glass of wine in his hands. He had rolled his sleeves up, revealing the luxurious watch on his wrist. He swirled the wine glass elegantly, the dance of the red liquid almost mesmerizing enough to distract him. He was waiting for the woman in the bathroom, awaiting her surrender. But time passed, and there wasn't any sound or movement. He frowned, losing his patience and barged into the bathroom. The huge bathtub was filled with cold water. Lana had submerged her entire body, including her head. James's pupils contracted. What the hell was she trying to do? He thrust his arms into the tub and pulled Lana out of the water. Episode 272. Striptease. James shook Lana's shoulders and shouted hoarsely at her. Lana, are you crazy? You're going to drown. All James could see was the image of Lana's body under the cold water. He felt like he couldn't breathe, and he gasped for air. If he hadn't barged into the bathroom, would she have stayed under? Lana got out of the tub and wiped the droplets from her face. Her silken hair rained water down on her shoulders, the tiny drops glistening over her skin. She was like an alluring siren of the sea, taking the souls of men and leaving them with nothing but an empty shell. Compared to James's burning rage, Lana was icily calm. The shock of the cold water had cleared away the last lingering effects of the drug. Slap. She forcefully slapped his hand from her arm, her eyes flashing. Don't touch me. James's hand reddened where Lana had slapped it away, but he shook off his dejection and laughed instead. Leaning forward, he pressed his lips firmly against hers. Mmm, the burning sensation Lana had felt earlier had been relieved by the cold bath. But with James's kiss, she felt it ignite inside her again with a vengeance. She opened her mouth, biting his bottom lip forcefully, and the faint taste of blood filled their breath. James frowned in pain and released his hold on her. The skin around his lip had cracked open. This woman was truly vicious. Fuck you, James. James's eyes were bloodshot as he glared at the woman cursing him to his face. Given his well-mannered upbringing, he couldn't bring himself to retaliate and curse her back. He suddenly raised a corner of his lips, chuckling to himself. It's fine. I'll wait to see how long you can hold it in. He let go of her and moved back gracefully, standing beside the bathtub and lifting his fingers to unbutton his shirt. What the hell was he doing? Why was he taking off his clothes right in front of her? His shirt and trousers were partially wet, clinging to his body and showing off every perfectly sculpted muscle. The man was a work of art. Lana looked at him, clenching her fists. James, you're not satisfied after locking yourself in a room with me and now you're trying to seduce me with a strip tease. How pathetic are you? James had already unbuttoned half his shirt, exposing his toned chest and perfectly tanned skin. He looked at her, raising a corner of his lips. Do you want it? If you want it, you'll have to beg me for it. Beg him? Lana clenched her jaw. Her mind was consumed by rage, and she couldn't help but want to charge forward and scratch him until he bled. But her body was winning the fight. She had barely managed to hold back her desire while she was under the cold water. Now, an attractive man was undressing right in front of her eyes. 
She felt she might be consumed by the sensations burning inside her. James! She lifted a finger, beckoning him over to her. Come here. Episode 273. Stop lying to yourself. She signaled for him to go over. Did she really take him for an obedient puppy? James started laughing, though he was evidently angered. Lana, did the drugs damage your brain? You're still unclear who has the upper hand here. You're the one in need. You should be the one begging me. He emphasized the word beg. He wanted her to beg him. This woman was a stubborn nut to crack. He had wanted her to yield to him all along, and over time it had become an obsession. It had even gained priority over his fixation on Clarice. The only person he could bear the thought of having sex with was Lana. His mind was filled with one goal, to make her give herself to him completely. Lana stretched out her arm and flicked back her hair, revealing a cold charm. You think you want me to beg you, James? Please, stop lying to yourself. If you think I'm going to beg, you're dreaming. If I was really that desperate, I could always sort myself out. James took a deep breath and a vein started pulsing in his jaw. He couldn't listen any longer. Lana, do you need a mirror to see how shamelessly you're behaving right now? Lana leaned against the sink lazily. I may be shameless, but do you dare deny that you're fond of my shameless ways? James opened his mouth but found he had no retort. I'll give you three seconds to come over here. One, two. Despite himself, James hurriedly crossed the tiles. Looking at the refined man in front of her, Lana scoffed. Ever since I found out you secretly brought lube on this trip, I realized you were desperate enough to do anything for me. James bent down, silencing her with his lips. He vented his frustrations and anger by kissing her passionately, biting on her lips and twisting his tongue around hers. Lana kissed him back. She wasn't usually a fan of such unhygienic practices as exchanging saliva, but right now the relief of the kiss outweighed her usual distaste. When he felt her respond, James slowly released her lips and held her face, looking at her teasingly. See, you do want me. Lana looked at his lips. The sight of her teeth marks on his skin made some kind of desire inside her flicker to life. She stretched her arms around his neck and crushed her mouth back against his. James was the first and only man she had ever kissed and she was inexperienced and a little clumsy. Her artlessness made James almost exhale in relief. So she didn't have any experience kissing men other than him. Lana had been true to him all this time. A wave of happiness swept over James as he wrapped his muscular arms around Lana's waist and pulled her tightly into his embrace. Episode 274. Who's begging now? James carried the woman in his arms into the bedroom. Lana's arms were still around his neck, and her legs circled his waist. She carried on kissing him relentlessly. He lowered his head and pushed back into her kiss, their mouths battling for dominance. In that moment, they were inseparable. The room was quiet, but the air crackled with electricity. Nothing could be heard but the sounds of their lips against each other as their bodies pressed together in a passionate embrace. Lana felt herself lowered onto a soft surface, and she stretched her arms behind her to support her weight on the bed. But all she felt was... the couch? They were on the couch? James hadn't carried her to the bed, but had stopped at the couch instead. Lana's lithe body instantly stiffened up, as the memories from their honeymoon night three years ago flooded into her mind. That night, she had lost her virginity to James on a couch. Hey, I don't want it on the couch. Get on the bed. She gave him a cold-eyed stare and tried to get up. But James's strong body towered over her. Three years ago, I made you my wife on a couch, and I've been thinking about doing it again ever since. 
Lana's mouth curled into an angry sneer. Why the hell do you think I'd want a repeat of that night? Do you think I enjoy being called another woman's name? Being humiliated? You're a real asshole, James. You know that... Her tirade was cut off as James covered her mouth with his. She bit his lip hard and he hissed in pain. Lana felt his body stiffen under her palms. Oh, you like a little pain, do you? She said and bit down again. James let out a moan of both pleasure and pain and moved in to recapture her lips. But Lana turned her head. You want more? You can have it. On the bed. James groaned in delicious agony. Damn you, woman. He grabbed her hips and swung her off the sofa. Lana's stomach swooped at the ease with which he lifted her into the air and tossed her onto the bed. As he leaned over her, she clamped her legs around his waist and flipped them both over. James thumped back onto the bed as Lana straddled him. He gasped as she grabbed his wrists and pinned them over his head, his eyes shining and his hair tousled. Well, Mr. Wright, Lana purred, let's see who's going to beg now. Forty minutes later, James's muscular chest heaved as he struggled to get his breath back. His bangs were wet and fell messily into his hazy eyes. His shoulders and back were covered in scratches, and he smiled dreamily at the light stinging sensation they left. He turned his head and nuzzled his nose against Lana's, kissing her slowly. That kiss lingered on the edge of her consciousness and carried an unfathomable weight. Her beautiful face was filled with a heady, flirtatious charm that made it hard to look away. Her eyes seemed clear and bottomless, like rain running into an endless sea. James thought he would start wars and burn cities for those eyes. Lana fluttered her long eyelashes and turned her head, breaking their kiss. Get lost, she said, but there wasn't much heat in it. James frowned. His breath was still uneven as he looked at the beautiful face beside him. Lana, who taught you to burn your bridges after enjoying yourself? Clearly we both had a good time. Why ruin that now? Lana opened her eyes and saw his handsome face right in front of her. When he let his ironclad mask slip and lay there before her, out of breath and hazy eyes, he looked like nothing but a love-struck young man. Lana felt a sensation stir in her chest. Episode 275 Good night, Mr. Wright. It was the feel of her heart fluttering. Lana blinked languidly and curled her swollen lips. You're quite right, James. I don't want to ruin it, which is precisely why I'm telling you to get lost. <laughs> James laughed. Cute, but I preferred it when you were screaming underneath me. Was that pride she could hear in his voice? One minute right had finally proven himself. Lana stretched out a leg and pushed him off the bed. Go on, scram! James took a last lingering look at her tangled in the sheets before gathering his clothes and headed into the bathroom. As the door clicked shut, Lana rolled over, exhausted. She didn't have an ounce of energy left, feeling like she had landed in a pile of cotton candy. She pondered sleepily over the feeling deep inside her, unsure how to describe it. She knew she was guarded when it came to physical intimacy but she never really understood why. Lana's mind was unusually relaxed, and out of nowhere, a fragment of a memory popped up. It was a little girl swimming urgently in a river, as though she was trying to rescue someone. Her head throbbed, the sudden pain caught her off guard, and she jolted upright and fell off the bed. Oh! James rushed out of the bathroom and saw her on the floor, tangled in the bed sheets. His defined abs stiffened. Her fall had triggered something in him, as though someone had broken something precious in his heart. Lana! He crouched over her and huffed. I can't even leave you alone for two minutes before you're throwing yourself across the room. Lana rolled her eyes, struggling to get up. The next second, James had scooped her into his arms and settled her back on the bed. Two minutes? 
She'd been away from him for two years, and she'd been perfectly fine, thank you very much. Seriously, what on earth was James thinking? Lana turned her back to him and yanked the covers back over herself. But before she could get comfortable again, James was there, his large palms planted on either side of her as he loomed over her with a wicked smile. Lana was tired and crabby, and she glared at the man above her. Enough, James. I'm going to sleep. James stretched out a large hand and patted her face, laughingly saying, Lana, I know you're not so naive to think that once is enough. That was only the appetizer. Lana gave him a cold-eyed stare, lifting her hands to his chest to push him away. But James grabbed her wrist in midair and pinned them over her head. You almost ruined me on our honeymoon, Lana. I've not forgotten about it. If you're not willing to beg me to take you, fine. By the end of the night, you'll be begging me to stop. Lana's eyelashes fluttered at James's words, and she flicked her tongue out to lick her lips. James smiled smugly. Good girl, you know deep down you can't resist me. You're right, Lana breathed, slowly drawing her legs up. I can't, James. I can't get enough. Oh! James yelped in pain and tumbled off the bed. What the hell, Lana? He yelled, clutching his groin as he curled up on the floor in agony. Lana smirked at him over the edge of the mattress. I can't get enough of seeing you make an absolute twat of yourself. That knee to the ball should put you out of action just long enough for me to get some sleep. Good night, hubby. She threw a pillow at his head and rolled over, grinning to herself.